Since last night's video, Tropical Storm Melissa has continued to undergo several developments as it remains nearly stationary in the Caribbean Sea. We are watching the latest model runs that now bring it dangerously close to the southeast coast of Jamaica by Saturday evening. We are also watching the potential for it to strengthen to hurricane status much sooner than is expected. With all these major impacts across Jamaica, Haiti, and eastern Cuba, we need to give you the details that you need to know so you can be prepared for this storm. So let's dive right into our forecast. As the time of this recording on Thursday night, we are watching Melissa, which is centered to the south and east of Jamaica. It is na nearly stationary, moving only to the north at about 2 miles per hour. Winds are sustained at about 45 miles per hour. If we look at it on our satellite map, we can see that development as Melissa continues to go through those cycles of development and deterioration and then redevelopment during the daytime heating. In one of these last frames, we are seeing that Melissa has a western edge that is really exposed. That's allowing inhibition for the further development of the system at this time. But we believe that to be diminishing over the next 12 to 24 hours. And when that shear diminishes, Melissa is going to continue to rapidly accelerate its development and could become a hurricane by the time we get to our Friday evening, if not first thing, Saturday morning. And so the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center does have Melissa continuing to move to the north slightly on our day Friday, if not a slight jog to the east. But by the time we get to Friday evening, it's going to make that westerly turn and it's going to skirt the southern coast of Jamaica by the time we get to Saturday evening. And it's going to impact that southern coast not only on Saturday evening, Sunday evening, into Monday evening before it makes that turn back to the north and to the northeast and then sets its sights on Cuba, the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos. And where that path will take us, here's one set of ensemble members and we can really see how the ensemble members are all thinking alike. They are starting to move that system to the west by the time we get to Saturday. But it is by Sunday into Monday that the ensemble members start to turn it towards the northwest, to the north, and eventually off to the northeast. Most of the ensemble members do take it south of Jamaica and then crossing Cuba into the Turks and Caicos. Very few of them have it with a direct impact to Haiti. And that is our current thinking at this time. And if you joined us in our last video, we thought that the model might take it up between Haiti and Jamaica and then make that turn through southeastern Cuba. We don't believe that's going to happen at this time. We do believe it's going to take that jog along the southern coast of Jamaica. So if you're watching us from places like um, Kingston, um, Negril, uh, Ochos Rios, you need to be taking preparations now for this dangerous and devastating storm that is heading your way by the time we begin next week. And here we can see a couple other spaghetti plot models here, which all of them are now really centering the movement of Melissa along the southern coast of Jamaica around the west end and then through central Cuba. Even the European ensemble models are taking that and then making that sharp turn to the northeast with this system. As I mentioned, we're going to watch this system start to develop very quickly. By the time we get to midnight on Saturday, we could be talking about a low level category one storm. But during the day on Saturday, we expect that intensification to continue and we could see Melissa strengthen to a category two, category three storm as it approaches that southeast coastline of Jamaica on Saturday night. A few of the models are now in agreement that this could strengthen to as much as a category four by the time we get to our Monday and Tuesday, by the time it gets to that western end of Jamaica and makes that turn. And if this were to happen, that is going to produce extreme amounts of wind and heavy rainfall because when you think about the storm, it's that northeast quadrant of the storm where you have the most intense winds and you have the heaviest rainfall. So as it makes that curve around the western end of Jamaica, we could be talking about winds that would be in excess of 120 to 140 miles per hour with 10 to 20, 30 inches of rain possible with this storm. So let's look at the Hats A model. And this is the model that we were looking at last night. And I apologize, this model does tend to jump. Here is Haiti. There's Jamaica. This model still wants to take it between the two and then curve it up to the north and east and bypass Cuba's southeastern coast. We don't think that this model is as likely as it looked last night. If it does come to fruition, it would enable it to remain over open water. So this is a model that does have the most intense winds and the lowest barometric pressure. But that jog between Haiti and Jamaica looks less likely than it did on our Wednesday evening. This is the H wharf model. This is the one that a lot of the ensemble members are picking up on. There's Jamaica off to the north. So we have that jog to the north on Friday. And then we're going to watch Melissa start to move westward as that pressure deepens, 940, 935 millibars. And it's going to skirt that southern coast. Kingston, you're going to be in the way of, of the storm. And it's going to hug that coast. And as it gets to that west end, that's when it's going to make that turn back to the northeast. And its pressure is still about 948 millibars. And then it's going to impact eastern Cuba. So places like Guantanamo, Santiago de Cuba, uh, you're going to be impacted by this storm. So this is the one that I'm probably leaning more at this time of where the, Melissa is going to head. It's approaching the southeastern coast of Jamaica by the time we get to our Saturday evening, and it's skirting 
along the southern coast for the next 36 to 48 hours, not moving very quickly, but bringing heavy amounts of rain and strong winds to the island. This is another uh, European ensemble, and this is one that just came out right before we recorded this video. Look at the placement of that low pressure system. This is Tuesday morning. It is anchored over that southwestern coastline of Jamaica, but with a 920 millibar low, we're going to have strong winds and heavy rain inundating the entire na island nation of Jamaica from the eastern end near Kingston all the way to the west coast. And that's going to last. And this is why we believe that if you are in Jamaica right now, you need to take those steps to be prepared. Let's look at all those wind gusts. Now, these are in kilometers per hour, so I'll try to translate a little bit for you. Here's Jamaica. There's Haiti. But watch as Melissa continues to move off to the west during our day on our Sunday into our Sunday afternoon. Winds are now about 30 miles per hour, gusting to about 40. But as the core of those storm winds get to closer to Jamaica and it starts to make that turn to the north, the winds increase to 50, 60. And by the time Tuesday morning rolls around, we could be talking about the western half of Jamaica experiencing winds in excess of 130 miles per hour. By Wednesday morning, that's in the southeastern part of Cuba with winds again, 120 to 140 miles per hour. So this is a very dangerous system that we are gonna have to continue to watch over the next 36 to 48 hours. Where that track exactly takes Melissa is gonna be extremely important to the type of weather you're gonna see, the amount of rainfall, and the impact of those winds. Here's an estimate of that rainfall. Here's the island of Jamaica. Here's eastern Cuba. Here's Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Those browns are indications of rainfall of 20 to 30 inches of rain. And so that encompasses almost the entire island of Jamaica, the southeastern uh, part of Cuba, as well as parts of Haiti and the Dominican. So as we get to major cities in these countries, we're going to see devastating flooding in those urban areas. And as we get into those more mountainous and rural areas, we're going to see flash flooding, mudslides, and uh, rivers exceeding their banks and causing devastating destruction in their path. So at this time, we want you to be aware that there is the possibility of 20 to 30 inches of rain for Jamaica, for the southwestern peninsula of Haiti, as well as southeastern Cuba. So as we prepare for the arrival of Melissa, the things that you need to be doing right now to prepare yourself is make sure that you have plenty of water and food. One gallon of water, per person per day. We expect this storm to last three to five days and the recovery time afterward is going to be extensive. So make sure you have water available. Make sure you have your medications, first aid kits. Make sure you have all your important paperwork. And if you need any kind of items for your babies, infants, seniors, or your pets, make sure you are gathering those together right now because time is going to be of the essence as we expect Melissa to start impacting Jamaica by our Saturday evening. So you have about 36 hours before its impacts. And before we jump into the United States, and I know we've been focusing a lot on Melissa in this video so far, I just want to say a quick thank you. The response to yesterday's video has been incredible. Tens of thousands of you turned in and so many new viewers have joined us here at the Weather Farm community. So from all of us behind the scenes, thank you for trusting us to bring you the honest down to earth weather cover. Now let's get right back to our forecast as we jump to the mainland. So here in the United States, as we begin our Friday, we are watching an area of weather that is moving through Oklahoma and Northern Texas. Texas bringing heavy amounts of rain. It's all associated with this low pressure system as it continues to move out of the Four Corners region, bringing moisture up from the Gulf. The eastern half of the United States, we're under the influence of high pressure, and it's brought some chilly weather to the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, with many areas seeing their first freeze of the season. And out of the Pacific Northwest, we're watching an atmospheric river continue to make its way onshore, bringing heavy rain and snow to British Columbia, as well as rain to Washington and Oregon. And by the time we get to our Saturday, those storms continue in eastern Texas up through Kansas. The Pacific Northwest, you're getting a slight break, but yet there's another storm waiting offshore that will impact you as we go Saturday night into Sunday. And for the East Coast, it is quiet. It is beautiful fall-like conditions for, to begin your last weekend of October. Now, we are monitoring the risk of severe weather with this system that is moving through the South Central states, through Texas. We do have a slight risk of severe weather for our Friday across most of Central and Western Texas. That marginal risk does extend up through Oklahoma and down towards places like Houston. The main threat that we experience on our Friday will be tornadoes, and those are really going to be confined to Central Texas, out towards Western Texas, out towards El Paso. We're also watching the threat of hail with these storms as they move through Texas. This is primarily going to be earlier in the day, but winds of excess of 50 to 60 miles per hour also can't be ruled out with these storms. And as we get to our Saturday, that threat does lower slightly with just a marginal risk for places like Houston, making its way over into Louisiana and down towards Brownsville, you would have a marginal risk of severe weather for your Saturday. In terms of our rainfall, the big thing that we've noticed here over the last 24 hours is that heavier access of rain has shifted to the north by about 50 to 100 miles. So now we're expecting the heaviest rain to fall from central Texas back up into southern Arkansas, where you can see two to five inches of rain. We're still expecting heavy rains across parts of Oklahoma near the Tulsa area, where you can see up to four inches of rain. Flash flooding will be likely in many locations with this amount of rainfall that is expected to fall over the next few days. Jumping into the Pacific Northwest, we've also seen an increase in the amount of precipitation 
here as well. It's now parts of British Columbia, six to eight inches of liquid precipitation. And as we get into those mountains, it's going to be heavy amounts of snow. Five, six feet of snow is likely in the highest of those elevations. But look, along the west coast of Washington State and Oregon, we are now anticipating three to five inches of rain likely. Putting everything into motion over the next several days, we watch these storms here in the south. That's going to bring the heavy amount of rain. We see the atmospheric rivers make their way on shore into the northwest. There's the next one for our Sunday, bringing heavy amounts of snow. And this one's going to be a little bit further south and pull a little bit cooler air down into the Pacific Northwest. So the Cascades, the Blackfoot Mountain, uh, near Yellowstone, and those higher elevations, you can see some significant snow with this system as it makes its way on shore by the time we get to our Sunday and to our Monday. In terms of our temperatures, it's going to be cool across the eastern half of the United States, 40s and 50s, 60s across the Tennessee and Oklahoma, 70s and 80s down through Texas and along the Gulf Coast. As we make our way to our Saturday, much of the same. Where we have those showers here in the Central Plains, temperatures will be kept down in the 50s, but we see 60s up through the Dakotas. The Pacific Northwest, you are cool with that next system making its way on shore. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s, as well as 40s across upstate New York into New Hampshire and Vermont as well. And it's a repeat as we close out our weekend with temperatures generally in the 50s and 60s from the Central Plains to the East Coast. The real warmth is kept down into Texas where we can have mid-90s in far southern Texas. Even out in the deserts, Arizona, you're in the 80s for your Sunday. But look off to the north and west in parts of British Columbia. We have high temperatures in the 20s and 30s for our Sunday afternoon. So as we go into next week, we are watching that system that will move out of the Rockies. Initially, we thought this would bring a lot around of severe weather to the Central Plains. But that's going to be form a closed off low. And it's going to help steer Hurricane Melissa out and away from the United States. So at this time, we do not believe that there will be a risk of Hurricane uh, Melissa impacting Florida or anywhere up and down the East Coast into early next week. But we are going to continue to watch this because this system is going to be crucial to keeping Melissa out to sea as that trough continues to build in the eastern half of the United States. And as we go into the first few days of November, we are expecting the eastern third of the United States to be well below normal. Florida, especially, a greater chance of being below normal. Out west, we are expecting above normal temperatures as we're going to get a strong ridge that will build here in the western part. And it's going to dislodge a lot of colder air into the eastern half of the United States for the first few days of November. But without a snowpack across Canada at this time of the year, that cold air will modify as it continues to move south and we'll just see generally below normal temperatures during the first few days. And we're going to see above normal precipitation for the northeast, but as those atmospheric rivers continue to pack the northwest, we're going to see above normal precipitation there as well. But most of the central part of the United States, through the Gulf states down into Florida, we're expecting below normal precipitation as we begin the month of November. Well, we thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm. I just want to let you know, again, thank you for all the feedback and the support from yesterday's video. We are expecting to go live, so make sure you click that bell notification icon because we could be going live anytime this weekend to bring you the latest info about Hurricane Melissa, its latest tracks and impacts to Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba. Please do everything you need to do to be prepared. Let us know what's going on in your location down in the comments, and we will talk to you again real soon.